Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Shake Sales. Today, I got Jason Bay, and we're going to talk about something really interesting. Um, a lot of salespeople are unemployed right now. So we're going to talk about how to get a job using what you would normally use app on sales for. Jason, welcome. Yeah, it's good to be back again, man. Uh, so for those, uh, would you mind doing this quick introduction on for those people maybe meeting you for the first time? Yeah, so I'm a career salesperson. Uh, the only job I've had professionally besides working in a mill the summer prior to college is a uh, is as a salesperson or running a business and selling. Um, but I run a company called Outbound Squad. We primarily help software as a service companies and professional services companies with outbound. We do stuff with account executives as well around discovery, multi-threading, demos, et cetera. But 80% of the work I do is how do I get someone to open and reply to our cold email? How do I get them to pick up the phone uh, when we chat with them and land a meeting, which we talked about last time. And then what I've been talking about a lot lately in the last, I would say, probably since COVID, honestly, because the job market's been kind of shaky, especially in tech, is how do we use outbound to get a job? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but yeah, super excited to be here again. Love it. So one of the things I wanted to share from an employer standpoint, prior to this like employee shortage that we had during COVID, like way I hired was like if somebody cold emailed me, they're on the top of the list for hustle. Yeah. They're, they're in a sales role and you show the motion of doing sales while yeah. interviewing you're automatically at the top of the list. Like the hustle, you get the reward. Now, mm -hmm. something shifted over, I mean, with COVID and all the the boom, what shifted is like, you didn't have to do any fucking work, to be frank, to get a job, <laughs> right? And you didn't even actually, you have to hustle that hard to sell because everyone was buying. Now, all of a sudden, that hit the fan and like, not everyone's buying and everyone's actually caring about where they spend. I mean, that's my perspective, right? So like, what you're going to share here is like best practice for anybody looking for a job in any market. It gets you on the top. Of the yeah. Place. Yeah. I mean, that's not only your perspective, but I mean, all of the data would show us that right now is like, it's, it's a tough selling environment right now. I mean, according to vendor deal cycles are 40% longer than they were two years ago. So people are just like much more careful about the software that they bring in the amount of money that they spend on it. Who needs to approve it? And when stuff like that happens, the job market tends to shrink a little bit too. And there's less positions open. So standing out is, it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and, and folks, even on the like business side have d like, they've killed whole, whole go to market motions. Like, uh, I've seen yep. companies where like, oh, we're just not going to do SMB anymore. It's just, mm hmm. It was sales was working, but this whole division was like not profitable or not the best economic sense for the business long term. So like we're killing it. Like yep. 75 reps laid off right there, even though they're hitting their numbers. Yeah. That's the toughest part is because I've worked with a lot of SDRs to help them get jobs as account executives because they hung around at their company with the promise of being, you know, promoted to an AE. They're hitting 125% of quota and then they get laid off because of the situation that you just talked about. This business yeah. unit is just getting crushed. Yeah. Which is and like a really unfortunate stopped. position to be yeah. in, right? You're crushing quota, you're doing really good, you're about to get promoted to AE, and then you basically get laid off due to circumstances like completely outside of your control. You know, and that's, I, I've been on the other end of that and I had to lay off my whole team back when I had a job like yeah. 15 years ago. I had to lay yeah. off my whole team and they were crushing it. I'm like, this sucks. Like, oh God. And I'm like, I never want to be on that side again. And, you know, yeah. uh, I, I think I, I was like in my 20s then. So I was kind of like, yeah. I'm never do. I'm never being in this again. And now with like, you know, shrinking an economy and, and buying, I'm like, well, I don't have an option. I understand why this decision was made. So my goal yeah. was like, never be in that position. But anyways, let's talk about, let's talk about, enough about me. Who cares about that? What do you, what do you do? What's like the steps? How would you go about doing this? Yeah. So I think it's, we should dispel some myth, uh, myths, uh, myths. Can't say that word today. Uh, first. So I think there's a common myth that if I'm an SDR, I cannot get an account executive job. Like I can't get hired as an account executive unless I've been an account executive. There's a common myth that I can't get into tech 
uh, if I've never sold tech before. And there's also this common myth that I should just follow the process and submit applications. Um, all of those are completely false. Like you don't need to to do any of those things or follow any of that sort of general advice. I've worked with literally dozens of reps in the last couple of years and, and also helped my wife with this process too. Um, she used this process to get a job as an account executive with no experience, didn't leverage me for uh, introductions. And she also got hired as an account executive cold calling into uh, the sales leaders at Zendesk. Getting us, again, no help from me with introductions or anything. Wow. So I think the first place to get started is just like you would with selling, it's your ICP. And instead of ideal client profile, it's your ideal job profile. So you really need to think about instead of filling out hundreds of applications or dozens of applications and doing spray and pray, how do I get really focused on the five to 10 jobs that I really, really want? And they go really deep in those. Mm. So what I want you to be thinking about is um, RepView and Glassdoor are two really good tools for this. You need to think about what's what do you like about your current job and what don't you like about sales jobs that you've had? And that's everything from org size, the level of product market fit at the company. Maybe it's the level of control that they exert over how you do your job. There's a lot of different things. Maybe it's pay. So kind of think about what are the really important things that you can look for. And RepView is a great place where you can literally sign up and create an account for free and you can see reviews. I wouldn't reach out to get a job at a company if they don't have a RepView account in software. So like go to RepView and I can search for companies by quota attainment, how much people get paid, ratings on the company. Glassdoor, I've also found to be very accurate too. So Glassdoor is going to give you a pretty real perspective of what people actually think of that company. So ideal job profiles first. And the output of this is I want to have five to 10 jobs that I really, really want. They don't even need to have open positions, by the way. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies will hire and they'll make room for someone that's really talented. And you also don't know if someone's on a PIP or something like that and you need to replace people as well. So that'd be step number one, targeting. Ideal job profile. You want to dig into that anymore? Yeah, let's jump in. Well, so let's let's go into targeting. I like that. So if we're looking at um our job ideal job profile, essentially, what we want to do next now is think about the people that we want to reach out to. So the way that we get our the way that we break into the company is you're not going to just submit an application. What you want to do is reach directly out to the sales leaders and you should start higher than you think. So if you're applying for a sales job, cold call the VP of sales and the CRO at that company. Cold call heads and directors of sales. And then of course, if there's a hiring manager on that job post, I want to contact that person directly too. So if you're trying to get a job at those companies, go directly to those people. And you're going to do multi-touch just like you would do if you were prospecting. For a, for a client, <laughs> right? You're going to go phone plus email plus social. I'm going to send a connection request via LinkedIn. I like to do a lot of this over the phone, but it's, you know, hey, Dave, it's Jason. I saw that you're hiring for account executives right now. Do you mind if I share why I think I might be a good fit for the job? And you can let me know if you want to hang up or not. And then if you get a really rude response from a sales leader, that's probably a good indicator to not work for that company, by the way. So, 99% of the time when you do this, people are going to be pretty excited that you did something that they want more of their reps to do. And then from there, it's, hey, Dave, on the job post, I saw that self-sourcing is really important that account executives need to self-source more pipeline. Here's where I have experience doing that. Number one, number two. And if I'm an SDR, I might talk about, here's the amount of pipeline that I've sourced in my current job or in previous roles. Here's how I've done that. And then I'm just going to ask, how did I do? Love it. Love it. So and you're, go ahead. A quick question for you. Okay. So on this, like I want to dig in. So um, multi-touch makes sense. You talked about uh, going to the top, then maybe the hiring manager. So more of an ABM approach. Are you doing this at the same time? Or are you waiting, kind of driving this out over a couple of days? Or how do you go about this? I'm going to reach out to all of the people at once. So I'm going to go account-based. There's probably four or five people that I want to reach out to at, the, at that company. I'm going to reach out to them all at once. And what I would think about, so I'll give you a couple of things to look for. 
if it's a sales executive, they probably have recommendations on their LinkedIn profile from reps that have worked with them. That's like a great thing to mention in your outreach, whether it's via LinkedIn, whether it's via email, phone. You know, hey, Dave, I, I saw one of your reps from a couple of years ago. Susan left you a really great review. You just seem like a really great sales leader. And I was giving you a call because I noticed you're hiring account executives right now. Would love to put my name in the hat. Can I share why I might, why I think I might be a good fit for the position? You can let me know if you know you want to hang up or not. Have a little bit of fun with it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, be super specific. And then I also, yes, let's reach out to all of those people at once. Um, I think this this thinking of like, oh, I should just apply and like kind of put my name in the hat. Like, I don't want to be shy about the fact that I want to work there. No different than I don't want to be shy about the fact I want to meet with the people at this company. I'm not going to be shy about that. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, look, this is the time to show your skill, right? You want to show enthusiasm, like be very clear what you want. And I think you've got like 30, 30 seconds or a minute or two of the of the head honchos time. You might as well go bold, right? Yeah. And from a messaging standpoint, think about this is no different than selling your product or service. It's not just don't waste all of the airtime talking about yourself. You need to say, I specifically saw that you guys sell to so-and-sos, or I specifically saw that in the um, AE position, you're looking for people that can do X, Y, and Z, like personalize, provide context, and you're going to like get confirmation around what they care about. And then you're going to pitch them essentially on you. But you're going to do that through the context of what they said they already care about and what they're looking for in their sales hires. Gotcha. Okay, it makes sense. Um, what are any other steps? Like, so what happens from here? Like, you've got you've got them on the you've you've done this a couple of times. Assuming you got people on the phone, you just go yes. for the ask. Yeah, the ask is a couple of different things. Really, the ask would be, hey, you know, would you mind giving me a direct intro to the hiring manager? I saw it so and so. Like I can send you an email. Do you mind just like bringing that person into the into the fold, or I can give you my email address and you can send it. So like I want a direct intro to the hiring manager, who will then ask me to apply formally. But I want to get the blessing from a sales leader because that's a that's going to fast track your application. And essentially, if you did a good job and the sales leader likes you, that's going to pretty much guarantee an, an interview opportunity. Love it, love it. This is uh. You know, so this is, it sounds very exciting. So easy to do. Um, obviously you, you get, you're, you're going to get rejected. What are, how do people deal with that rejection? Is this, you know, how do you bounce back? I guess. And, and again, yeah. we're going to go into like, how do you get rejected as a salesperson? It's like normal, right? Yeah. I would say it's, it's a simple process, just like much of selling is, but I, I would say this is kind of hard to do. <laughs> um, in the sense that it's it's very uh, you know labor intensive to do this type of research, and you need mm. to call and call and call a ton. So, in terms of rejection, I mean, yeah, I think that outside of the mindset components of objection, you know, it's like, hey, we can talk about not taking it personally and all that kind of stuff. I think it's like how to deal with the objections is probably the bigger part of it. If you're an SDR applying to become an account executive and you've never been an account executive before, that's the obvious question you're going to get asked. Yeah. What selling experience do you have? That's the number one question they always ask. So you need to be prepared with how to actually answer that question. Um, and you should just be really candid. Hey, Dave, you know, most of my experience has been a sales development rep. And the reason I was applying for this is I've met the requirements at my company to become an account executive. And I was looking at your company and the opportunity looks really great. I feel like I couldn't pass it up, but I've done X, Y, and Z. I've self-sourced X amount of pipeline. Um, the AEs have closed X amount of pipeline off of my deals. And from what I understand, this is the number one skill you're looking for in an account executive. And if you give me a chance to interview, I'm totally prepared to role play and show you how I would actually sell your solution. And that would be the other pro tip that I have is the way that you handle the objection is show them a willingness to actually do the job. So if they question that in the first interview, your lack of selling experience, you should be prepared. Like if I'm interviewing at Mailshake, I should I, I could say, hey, I'm actually prepared to have like a discovery conversation with you, like in a role play right now. If you if you want to do that, I I want to demonstrate to you that I can sell this. 
Nice. So you actually have to do a bit of the research, watch a demo video, understand what to do, right? Like you can't just show up with no research and not be able to do that. Yeah. No different than if I showed up to a sales call completely unprepared, like in so many reps do this still. Like I hop on sales calls where people are selling things to me. I'm like, you realize I'm a sales trainer, right? You know, come on. Yeah. Um, so, so do the research. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the other thing too is to make it a little easier if you're applying for an account executive job and you haven't had selling experience, look for companies that don't have SDRs and only have account executives. And then also look for companies that sell SMB. SMB is typically going to be an easier account executive job to land with no prior experience than selling enterprise. Like the worst thing Honestly, even if the company accepted you, the worst thing you could do is put yourself in a situation where you're selling six figure plus deals and you have zero sell- sales experience. That's going to be a really tough learning curve for you. So look for something that's really transactional, that's SMB. And people that sell companies that sell SMB, typically just through the website, you can find out everything that you need to know around the problems they solve, questions you might ask in a discovery conversation, et cetera. Love it. Love it. I think. A- any last tips or anything else that you haven't shared that would be helpful? I think those are it. This is mostly a mindset thing. I find so many reps are resistant to cold calling the sales execs at the places they want to get jobs at. And this is the number one way to stick out and impress them. So it's really the mindset. You got to get over this, like I'm bugging them. And you know they told me to just apply through the application. Like, don't do that. That is like a that is like a one in two hundred or three hundred chance versus one in ten chances, one in five chances of getting hired, and go straight account based account based like you had said before. I'm gonna Love find it. my my favorite five to ten opportunities that they will be able to hear my excitement because I'm so excited about those opportunities versus me sending out two dozen applications this weekend. It's it's working smart, not hard, right? Yeah. This what you described looking for your five biggest companies Mm -hmm. uh, or your 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 best opportunities best jobs that may i'm just gonna call i'm gonna break this down this is three hours of work you describe okay hour one find the freaking companies right yeah find their contact information and linkedin stuff this is no more than an hour because it's five five companies maybe three to five people inside each one right watch the freaking demo video at 2x whatever right Go on YouTube and do it. Hour two is you're now figuring out what you're going to say, writing your scripts and in and, and kind of practicing, right? Hour three, you make the five to 10 calls you need to make, right? It is not that hard. Um, yeah. and, and if you can't, the great thing, what I love about what you described here is you'll get live feedback. No more waiting for crossing your fingers and waiting for an email to come back. And, 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 or you'll get feedback saying you suck, you know, or fi- you'll figure <laughs> that out and get better yeah. and, you know, um, and, and whatnot. But anyways, Jason, thanks so much. This is super helpful. Again, not rocket science. But, oh my God. No one fucking does it. Like, yeah. come on. It's crazy. Is, I mean, yeah. what better way, like you said, to demonstrate that you can do the job than by doing the job on, on the people that are hiring for it. Yeah. It's just, I find that maybe one in a hundred salespeople that apply for jobs will do this. So it's just an, it's just a super simple, straightforward way to stick out. Love it. This is, this is hopefully, hopefully this is game changer and we get, you get calls. We, the world just hire more hiring managers and VPs of whatever get calls and this yeah. works. And I have to say, this is a strategy, even if you're not in sales, whatever freaking job. Yeah, whatever role you're in, it works because yep. it. I would say it even works better in like marketing product. I think it works best in tech, but like it works across the board. If you're in product, I guarantee you zero people are doing this. You are one of one. Yeah. In marketing, maybe you're one of two. In sales, you might be one of five, but like it's still a very small number of people that are leveraging this tactic or yep. approach. Anyways, Jason, where can people go to follow along, learn more, hire you guys? Uh, Outboundsquad.com. So there's a hub there. We get tons of free resources. I post daily on LinkedIn. We got a podcast called Outbound Squad. And then we have training services for companies as well there. So if you're a sales leader listening to this and you want help applying some of the outbound stuff, 
that we've talked about, uh, outboundsquad.com is the best place to do that. Love it. Thanks, Jason. 